possible that I'm being delulu for thinking that my guy friend likes me. He has a girlfriend, guess, sana. First problem. Sidinga e context. Well, sidinga e, sidinga e contextual. Because I don't think loneliness has an age. Personally, for me, we all go through moments and spots of loneliness. You know, I knew that there would be an ebony here. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that there would be a Sinta here. Are you making this move for your child or are you actually making this move for yourself? Why do I not feel that I deserve to be with someone who chooses me and only me? Stay away from Sposes. Mzwake. Wabana la kiena. Maybe you don't got Disney Plus and he's just like, mm mm. Nope. More than anything, every time you're around them, you're just thinking, whoa, what are you yelling? Cut them. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is I, it is Katleo Malela. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I am so glad you continuously do. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to like the videos. It really does help me get a long way. Let's try and get the videos to over a thousand likes. I really would appreciate that so, so much. That's my hair, my hair is doing too much today. It's doing too much. But uh, I'm so excited for this video because I haven't done this one in quite a while. And because it is Mental Health Awareness Month, as I record this, I'm not sure when you're gonna see it because I got a lot of content. But because it is Mental Health Awareness Month, I really did want to do an advice with cat I haven't done one in a while I will attach some of the ones that I've done either in the end of the video or in some of the cards up here um so please do watch those if you care thank you so much for being here as always we're gonna, we're gonna get into some of the things that you have sent my way on Instagram where you were just like cat I'm gonna need you to come through here and advise me with this because I don't know what's going on so that's exactly what I'm about to do. So let's get into it. Was the clip here. So you should follow me on Instagram if you want to be able to um, be able to partake in the advice with cat. So we've got quite a few here. I'm gonna try and get through as many as I can because a lot of the time I am often bombarded with um, advice suggestions for the video. So. Let's get into it. Let's um, the first one says, hi, Kat. I opened a credit card and I'm struggling to pay it off. I'm 23 and wow, am I suffering? What should I do? Um, wow, you opened a credit card at 23. That, that, that is in and of itself is huge. I actually don't remember. No, I did not have a credit card at 23, probably much later on, but it is really difficult to maintain a credit card. Um, I find it quite unfortunate that you had to open one at 23, but we have many reasons why we set up credit cards for ourselves. But the biggest thing is you have to keep trying to pay the credit card. Now, if you opened it, I'm assuming that you do have a job and that you can pay the credit card. And I think it's an issue of you just have to pay little by little as you can. Um, but there's often always a standard payment that you need to repay into the credit card every single month, dependent on the, uh, the, 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 the money, the amount of money, the, the, the total of the money that they could loan you, that the bank could loan you. Always remember that a credit card is not your money. It is just for rainy days. Basically, credit cards are for rainy days, like really, really rainy days, because you always have to pay that money back. So it's an issue of just you have to keep paying into it. And the only way you can get um, rid of the credit card is to pay it off and to pay it off you just have to not use it so i think it's an issue of you have to just pay into it as much as you can and try by all means not to use the credit card because if you do not pay the credit card it directly negatively impacts your credit score i am familiar with this 
<laughs> I'm familiar with this and I've been here before. So it's really, really very, very important to make sure that you pay the credit card. If you are 23, um, and you got access to a credit card, I am assuming that the bank did the background checks to say that you can pay for the credit card because you, you're just not given a credit card and gee, just willy nilly by banks. Um, so I, the only thing is I, I can recommend put it away. Do not use it. Do not have it in your purse. Don't have it in your purse and try to pay into the credit card as much as you can. Even when you have a little bit of extra income coming in, you have a little bit of something extra that's come in, throw it into the credit card and try and close off that scolotto, that expense as quickly as you can. And then cut it. try not to have a credit card, especially at that age. That's that's all I, I can advise. I'm not a, a financial advisor, but that's all I can advise from little old me. Okay. The um, best way to move on from a romantic relationship, man, I think I have a video about this one, about how to move on. But essentially, um, let me tell you, it's it's one of the hardest things ever in life to, to move on from a romantic relationship, especially if you have been so hurt or you're still in love with that person and you had to walk away, not necessarily because uh, you wanted to, but because you had to. Um, and the, the, Things that I could highly, highly suggest you do is one, block delete. This is really, really important. Block delete. Um, you cannot have access to that person. If you really do want to move on, if you really do want to move on with your life and start afresh and do all those wonderful things, you do not want to have access to that person. You have to block and delete them. Delete them off your phone, delete the number off your phone, block them off of all social media because you're going to want to see you know what I'm saying? You're going to want to see, and then at some point you're just going to have a drunken moment, you know, or you're going to call yourself a drunken master. And then at some point you're going to be calling this person and drunk dialing and all of that. I highly do not recommend that you do that. So best thing first is to block and delete. Secondly, spend time with your safe spaces. So I call people that I am very close to, people that spring up my, um, you know, my mood, people that, that I feel safe with, people that protect me, people that listen to me. I call them my safe spaces. So spend a lot of time with your safe spaces. It's really important to be around them, especially in a time where you're really struggling to move forward. Also, lastly, because I could be here all day, I really could be here all day, but also lastly, very, very important to remember the things that make you you. So get into doing the things that make you you again. Um, a lot of the time when we get into relationships, we lose certain elements of ourselves. So there's certain things that we used to do, but we don't do as much of anymore because now we're with this person all the time. So we're not really reading as much or we're not really um, taking up our hobbies as much as we used to because we used to spend so much time with them. Or we're not really doing some of the things that bring us joy because we spend so much much time with that person. So really, really important to harness and tap into those things that bring you joy, the things that bring out the creative side of you, the, the happier side of you, the more joyful content side of you. Hi Kat, maybe you can try and advise the girlies on getting a pap smear. I think this is just, it's common sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's not common sense. It's not common sense. And I understand that the sun is coming in and out of the clouds and I'm recording today. And that is that on that. Okay. We're just going to have to deal with it. But, uh, getting a pap smear is really important because pap smears are the tests that are done essentially that will check for any things like cancers or check for any, uh, problems within your lady bits in your lady areas. So I really do highly recommend that you get pap smears done. You can get pap smears done at clinics at hospitals. You don't necessarily always have to have a medical aid in order to get a pap smear done. You don't always have to be going to a gynecologist's offices or a gynecologist's practice to get a pap smear done. You can just find out at your local clinic or at your local hospital, government or private, um, what you can do to get a pap smear done and if there's going to be a cost to it they'll inform you in that way but I really think it is important to get a pap smear done 
Sorry about that. It is really important to get a pap smear done um, so that you can always keep in check with what's happening with your lady bits and so that you can know that you are in the good. You're in the running, okay? So some people get pap smears done every year. It really just depends on you and I think it depends on how sexually active you are as well. But some people get pap smears done every two years. I typically get them done every two years. Um, but sometimes if I feel like something is kind of off in that area, I'll always just go see my gynecologist anyway. Um, so the area by your, um, your tubes, your uterus, all of that, really, really important to always have a check on that all the time, all the time. Feeling extremely detached, almost overwhelmed, by my goals and dreams. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. If anything, I know this girl and I love her to bits. But if anything, that is also the time period of the year that we are in. A lot of the time when we get to the latter stages of the year or the last quarter of the year, we are filled with so much overwhelm and we're filled with so much fatigue and also a sense of confusion because there's a lot of things that enter into your brain like, oh man, I could have done this. I didn't manage to get this done this year. I didn't manage to get this done this year. There's so many things that I want to get done. And I feel like, man, it's the end of the year. How am I going to squeeze all those things in? So the feelings of overwhelm and confusion and being lost and stuck are not uncommon, especially at this time of the year. Many of us are just tired. We're really fatigued. We're mentally fatigued. Um, we're emotionally fatigued, physically fatigued. We're just done with the year, especially at this time of the year. So one be a little bit kinder to yourself and give yourself a little bit grace. Oh my God, I wish I could hug you so much. Um, be a little bit kinder to yourself. Give yourself a little bit of grace because you're not the only one in this position. But I think at some point you're going to have to try and uh, segment things you're going to have to try and focus on what is priority and what isn't because when you have a lot of things in your mind it's very easy to get lost in the mix it's very easy to be like oh i want to do everything at the same time when really that isn't the point i think if you want to finish off the year strong it's really important to maybe just focus on one or two things that you feel like these are the most pressing things these excuse me these are the most pressing things these are the things that i want to prioritize prioritize everything else can uh, I'll just look into it uh, at the beginning of next year it really is very important not to take on too much or take on new things at this point because they will aid and 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 continue to bring up those emotions of feeling stuck and feeling overwhelmed and unsure and all of that so it's really really important to just be aware of things like that um, but it's not uncommon for you to be feeling this way I think maybe just focus on one or two things as opposed to focusing on five or six things that you want to get done before the year rounds off. Um, also enlist the help of those around you. Very, very important to enlist the help of those around you. Where are we? Okay. Enlist the help of those around you because you'll be surprised at how people that are around you can help in your thought process, in how you achieve something. They can help give you tips and tricks and advice and all of that. You don't always have to feel like you're doing it alone. There was something that I was really confused or unsure about um, last week. And I had a conversation with someone who was close to me and I had light, light bulb moments in literally a conversation of maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I had light bulb moments ringing off of the top of my, in my brain and I instantly got to work. And um, it's, it's, it's really important to also just surround yourself with people who you think might be able to help you. You know, you're not going to be using them. You're just going to be getting assistance from them. Um, how do you manage feeling, how to manage feeling lonely around the age of 28 to 35? Now, okay, let me, let me drink my water. Now, I don't think loneliness has an age. Personally, for me, we all go through moments and spouts of loneliness. I think one of the most important things that you can uh, discover or look into is why the feeling of lonely is there. We all get lonely because maybe we've been spending a lot of time by ourselves and we're not seeing 
people or maybe you're not in a relationship and maybe you know a lot of the time relationships uh sort of uh drown out that feeling of loneliness or spending time with friends and family all the time drowns out the feeling of loneliness now you're spending a lot of time with yourself so i think it's really important to first uh pinpoint where the feelings of loneliness are coming from and also remember again i will always suggest you be easy on yourself and treat yourself with a lot of grace because being lonely is not um uncommon but being lonely also doesn't necessarily mean you're alone so also use the people that are around you the people that you care about your safe spaces um talk to them about how you are feeling um try and spend some time with them as well try not to be in spaces where you are alone <coughs> excuse me i'm drinking ice water and it always makes me cough try to spend some time with people that you care about your safe spaces so that you're not alone a lot of the time but really important to kind of pinpoint where the loneliness is coming from when did you start feeling lonely what was the catalyst what what spurred on the feelings of loneliness um but loneliness isn't uncommon i think we all go through moments of loneliness and i believe that you just have to be a little bit kinder to yourself it's not uncommon you are not alone but um use the people that are around you to combat that as well but very important to find out where it's coming from um dating a guy that has a stay in girlfriend i don't know how i would advise that firstly i would say that you are much more worthy than being with someone who already has a girlfriend. Number 1, I think it's really important to maybe build your confidence and uh self-esteem levels because why are you with somebody who already has a girlfriend? Whether that person is a stay-in girlfriend or not, what is happening with you that pulls you to that person um that you consistently want to be around them even when you know that they have a stay in girlfriend i think the issue here is more with you and not necessarily them why do you feel the need to be part of all of that um and want to put particularly continue it um i can't advise it i think it would be against my morals and my ethics to say oh well girls be with him kick out the other girl do this that's never what i would advise i think what i would say is that what it's it's a deep dive right i think you need to do a deep dive into yourself and say to yourself what is it about me that keeps drawing me to this person why do i not feel that i deserve to be with someone who chooses me and only me and not be someone's second option or third option or fourth option um so i i can't i i think i would only say that you deserve better and you are worthy and absolutely more than enough to have someone who just looks at you and only you and is for just you and not sharing you with someone else like you're some sort of commodity Mm -mm. I went on a weekend away with a guy friend. Few weeks later he randomly sends me flowers at work. Okay. You went on a weekend away with him. Okay. Um randomly sends me flowers at work. Is it possible that I'm being delulu for thinking that my guy friend likes me? He has a girlfriend guess sana. First problem. Masabata. Jesus. You know I knew that there would be an ebony here. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that there would be a sinta here. Why are you doing this to yourself, Debo? Hmm? Her name is not Debo. Trust. I would never use their real names. Why are you doing this to yourself, girl? First and foremost, my question is let's ring it back, right? Let's dial it back a little bit. My question is, okay, my question is, why? Why? are you going on a weekend away with someone who has a girlfriend it's your guy friend but he's got a girlfriend why are you going on a weekend away with him was this a group weekend away and then some 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 happened i mean sidinga e context well sidinga e sidinga e contextual because i'm trying to understand why are you going away on a weekend trip with someone who is your guy friend who you know has a girlfriend Nah, you are being delulu. You are being delulu, okay? I'm going to tell you right now. 
Right now, you're being a little bit delulu. What is this that you are doing? What are you entourishing into? Are you delulu to think that your guy friend is into you? He possibly could be, but he's also a man. He possibly could be saying that, well, look, my girlfriend isn't going anywhere, but hey, man, you want to come through? Let's play. Let's have a good time. Are you going to do that? First and foremost, why did you go away with him? Why did you go away with him when he has a girl? The problem is And I keep saying to you guys, stay away from Bomosa. Ah, Bomosa was sharp. Wait. I just thought of Dr. Musa. Musa is, Dr. Musa is a grand guy. Stay away from Spuses. Mzwake. Wabana la kiena. Skazala la shimani bao. Don't do that. Don't do that. Sfeso. I think his name is Sfeso. I feel it in my blood. What? There's so much more that I want to know about that. No, I'm sorry. There's so much more I want to know. What are you saying? Um, I hate how I look. Ugh, I'm stuck. See now, see now we just moved on from something that was funny. Now we're moving into something serious. Okay. I hate how I look. I want to lose weight. What do you reckon I do to motivate myself? Whew. It's really important that you wanting to lose weight becomes a more intentional thing for you. You can't say that you want to lose weight. You can say you want to lose weight every day. You can say it until you're blue in the face. You can literally say it until it comes out of your ears. You everywhere where there it's a hole, it will come out. However, if you don't do anything about it, nothing is going to come of it. So how do you motivate yourself? Watch videos, TikToks, Listen, I'm starting with the absolute most basic thing. Watch videos, TikToks, uh, listen, follow Instagram accounts, follow Twitter accounts, uh, X, follow X accounts, follow all these social media spaces and drown out all the other spaces that are less important, okay? So if your goal is to lose weight, then that should be your ultimate goal. This is what you should be focusing on. Follow the right ones. Follow the ones that talk about eating healthy. Follow the ones that talk about some sort of body movement. Follow the ones that um, encourage at home just exercises, but very light exercises. Start, uh, start early. Start with something light. Don't be too hard on yourself. Watch what you eat. Very, very important. I think a lot of people tend to forget that you, you, you weight gain. Um, weight loss, weight loss, I'm sorry. Weight loss is largely attributed. It will be very successful when it comes to what you eat, unless you are doing something medical or you or decided to go under the knife or you are, um, doing something that is, that is assisting you in the weight loss. But if you can't, and if you're not in a position where you can do that and all you have is just you, then follow, 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 follow. I think the point is intent is really important. How far are you willing to go? How much do you really want to lose the weight? Because then discipline becomes your best friend. Discipline becomes your best friend. I'll give you an example with me. I only eat after two o'clock, sometimes even three o'clock each and every single day, except the weekends. The weekends I'll possibly eat earlier. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll eat a little bit later. I'm just lenient on myself over the weekend. It's one o'clock right now. I haven't eaten. All I'm drinking is water and having some green tea. And that's it. Discipline is your best friend when it comes to losing weight. So it's really, really important that you um, exercise that as well. But uh, it's all on you, hey? Intention is everything. Discipline is everything when it comes to losing weight. But motivate yourself by actually following accounts using social media, using the internet. You gotta use the internet. That thing is helpful, that thing. I'm going to Google. 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 What's your take on cutting off family members because they aren't an addition in your life? Cut it. Cut it. Catch me several streets. Several. Several. Catch me several streets outside. Cut them. If they're not additional to your life, in actual fact, if all they bring is doom and gloom and greed and, and just, just narcissism and horrible things, and they just are not a breath of fresh air, more than anything, every time you're around them, you're just thinking, whoa, 
Kiamuchison, what yelling? Cut them. Cut them. That is, that is my chat. I've cut off family members who have said horrible things about me or said horrible things about my family members that I care about, like maybe my parents or my siblings or whatever. You try and you try, you, you, imagine, you try and talk trash about my family members, I'm cutting you off like I never knew you. Like we don't share the same DNA. Uh-uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Cut them. Absolutely nothing wrong. Emona. Bona, if mutu how regularly get a panty, if a person is not even going to buy you it a panty, why are you concerned about having them in your life or not? They, them not being in your life is just, it's grand. It makes your life a lot more peaceful. Isn't peace what you want for yourself? I know I want it for myself, she. <laughs> Staying with your man, not moving in. I have my own place five minutes away, but I'm never there. It feels kind of off. Well, then, yeah. Oh. Maybe it feels kind of off because there's a part of you that, that feels like, you know what, if, if this is what we're doing, then at this point, maybe we should be considering being more committed to each other in the sense that we should be living together or we should move on to the next chapter of our relationship. Nothing about it should feel off. If I'm going to spend a week at um, Diesel, if I'm going to spend a week at Diesel's place, I don't, I don't feel like anything is off. Two weeks at Diesel's place, I don't feel like anything is off. If he's going to be here, it, it shouldn't feel off unless if you take a deep dive. Guys, I keep saying all the time, guys, Guys, you must take deep dives into yourself, into your life. Take deep dives because it's really important. Unless there is something within you that you want more for the relationship. Maybe you feel like, oh, well, now that we're doing this, at this point, we're ready um, to be moving into the next phase of our relationship. And if that's the case, then do it. Uh, well, I, we don't know how he is going to feel about that. Um, but there should be. I mean, you're grown. It's your place. It's five minutes away. What is the problem? Does he... I have a question. I have a question. Does he come to your place and spend equal amounts of time at your place? Or is everything... Are you just going... And why are you going to his place all the time, though? No, I'm kidding. Go be there, do whatever you want to do, girl. But uh, does he do the same thing? Is it actually reciprocal? Or maybe he just don't want to come to your house because I don't know. Maybe you don't got Disney Plus and he's just like, mm -mm. nope. <sighs> I want to take my son and move to another province and start over. I'm drained and I want my child to experience a happy and mentally healthy mom. Uh... Starting over, nothing wrong with starting over. Um, if you feel like a new place, a new environment would be a great option for you and your son. And if you feel like it'll make you better, it'll make you a better mother for him, but also a better human for yourself, a better individual for you, then I highly recommend that you do it. Are you in a place where you can financially do that? Or are you just asking, I don't think of moving house, but you have nothing set. You have no plans or goals in in mind, um, then I would say that maybe that's a little bit of a premature thing to do. But if there is goals in mind, if you have a job, if you can, um, if money won't be a problem, the problem is we also have to understand that uprooting a child. Oh my God, I should have been a therapist. I don't know, man. But the, pro the thing is, uh, uprooting a child also has negative effects. You also need to think about it's got positive effects, but who are you making this move for? Are you making it for you or are you making it for your child? You're saying that you feel drained and you feel unhappy, but you want to do this for your child. Is you moving to another environment doing it for your child or are you doing it because you hope that you will be better and that that in turn might, you know, aid in the the progression and the building of your relationship with your child? If it's for you and that you are feeling drained, how about maybe then working on yourself here by doing the right things that you want to do for yourself as opposed to uprooting him? Or her you need to consider or them you need to consider uh, what fundamental change that will do for your child that's a conversation you need to have with your child what about the the the, the, the other half the child's father what about 
family members, all of that, you know, the child's schooling, all of that. Very, very important subjects to think about before making the move. So uh, maybe think about, are you making this move for yourself? Or are you actually making, are you making this move for your child? Or are you actually making this move for yourself? If you guys enjoyed this video, thank you so much. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it and you feel ever so kind as to donate to the channel so that we can keep the channel going. It's a really tough time for creators, as I always say. So if you could give it a thanks or a super thanks or even maybe just join the channel membership space, that would go such a long way. It is Vlogtober, so I haven't really done much in terms of the channel membership space because I've been churning out for sometimes five videos a week, three, maybe four videos a week. And that already is very heavy on me. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I'm going to go and I will see you in the next video. Let's try and get this video to over a thousand likes. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, sayonara.